What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and today I'm editing pandas in Chengdu, China. So the other day we uh, we headed out to a sanctuary that was about two hours outside the city of Chengdu, China and the sanctuary is called Bi Feng Sia Sanctuary and it was a great environment to take photos of pandas and much better than the Panda Center was in Chengdu itself. I'm really glad we made the trip out there. It's like two hours from Chengdu, as I mentioned. You go to the city of Ya'an, and yeah, from there you just hop in a bus up the hill. It's it's really cool. And I thought it would be a cool thing for me to show you my process and how I, I went through deciding which images to keep. So what we're going to go through are my keeper, keeper images from the sanctuary. Now, um, before this video even hits YouTube, you will be able to head to brendansadventures.com and see the photos uh, there, the final edits of the photos at brendansadventures.com. So if you want to see the full size, complete edited videos, head over to my website. And by the time this is loaded on YouTube, the, the article will be right here. And while you're on the website, head down the sidebar. And sign up for my newsletter because when you do, you get a free subscription to my travel magazine, uh, Vagabundo Magazine, which is sweet. So head over and do that. Okay, let's get to the images uh, from Bifeng Sia Panda Sanctuary, which is cool. I'll walk you through. These are just some kind of snapshots I took on the way to the sanctuary. To get there, uh, one of the best ways to do so is you get to the front of the sanctuary and you walk down into the gorge. And this is an elevator that goes down into the gorge and in that gorge you've got some cool sights to see um, like the gorge itself but then there's some waterfalls it takes you about an hour and a half or so to walk up to the panda sanctuary or you can take the bus directly to the pandas either way but the gorge is beautiful there's some really cool stuff this is unedited just snapshot stuff of that gorge um, yeah on to the pandas okay so this is the first panda we went to a panda uh, uh, enclosure that was called the kindergarten and in, uh, for obvious reasons the pandas in this sanctuary were all under two years old and most of them were looked to be a last year's cubs so they would be eight to ten months old and this first one I kind of I really like this image because of the story it tells and in my how to shoot photos at the zoo I talk largely about how you have to create a story with your wildlife images by creating crops that do that. And so when you look at this image, you're looking at this panda and thinking, what's up this tree that the panda is looking at? And in reality, it was one of his buddies. There was another little panda that was up the tree and it was watching it intensely. Um, from a technical side of things, it's not a great image. The, the light was really harsh because we had to be there in the middle of the day. So you can see it's really overexposed here. And in the editing process, I tried to bring that back a bit with dropping the highlights. This is the unedited. When I drop the highlights, you get a little bit more detail in the face. Um, but it's sharp, as you can see here. If an image isn't sharp, just toss it. Honestly, there's no use in keeping images that aren't sharp. sharp. Uh, you'll never be able to sell them. So, yeah. Other than that, as I also mentioned in the how to take photos in a zoo video, uh, with wildlife, you really don't want to over edit stuff. Just add some color if you need it, maybe a little bit of clarity to help bring out the details again. And that's it. That's all you should really be playing with. You can add contrast and stuff. I don't like adding contrast too much with pandas because, again, the white goes really white and the black goes really black, and you lose the details, as you would see if I go like that. So, yeah. Anyway, this is another similar image, and this image tells less of a story. It's just cute. Again, it's sharp, so I can keep it. You can never have too many sharp images. Uh, you can see I've kept the animal at the rule of two-thirds there, which is always important. And again, not very much editing. Just dropped the highlights a bit, added a touch of contrast, and added some color and clarity. Now, I shot all the other images basically on my 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 Canon. Uh, I was there with my girlfriend Tiffany of WorldMeetsGirl.com, and she took the lens for a little bit, and so I was using the 50 millimeter here and just messing around with the image. And actually, this is probably my favorite image of the whole day, which is funny because usually a 50 millimeter um, is not a wildlife uh, wildlife lens, but I like what how this came out and. You can see what I was trying to do here is I create blur 
I usually try to find something in the foreground to blur and it kind of pushes your eye right towards the subject when you do that and I've put the subject right at the at two-thirds as well as this is right at two-thirds so you're really pushed um, as, a, as a viewer over to the subject which is your panda bear and it's just got a really great reaction the light is basically perfect uh, for what it what it is and you can see that it's sharp I've shot this at f 2.0 on that f 1.8 lens and when you're shooting 50 millimeters at that distance you still get a nice depth of field uh, enough to get the whole panda and that tree in focus and I've done a little bit of a different edit to this image I've dropped the highlights to bring the details again I've added some contrast to kind of make it pop a bit but I actually dropped the clarity I wanted to give it kind of that like wedding photographer's glow. If you look at it normally, it's a little bit harsh looking. If I added contrast, it's really harsh. You drop the clarity and it kind of looks like one of those wedding photos. And I, I liked how it looked. Um, again, similar image. It was sharp. It's not nearly as good as the other one. I didn't even edit it, but I keep these images on file in case there's a point in my life that I decide I want to use this or sell this image. Uh, this was just a snapshotty image. Uh, of the panda climbing the tree I kinda liked the the look because it was different the animal wasn't looking at me and it shows it in action but not a great image the light again is harsh uh, this image was okay it was sh completely sharp but this branch really really annoys me uh, I might go in and clone stamp that out using Photoshop elements which I could do in probably two or three minutes uh, so it's not that big of a deal but when you're shooting wildlife, do yourself a favor and move to make sure that the whole animal is in the right um, right area with nothing distracting in the in the way. So one of the biggest keys to wildlife photography is don't just settle on one shot. Move around to get the perfect shot. And this again is the same sort of image. You can see how sharp these images are. That's about as good as it gets when it comes to, to sharpness. You can't do much better than that, especially since I was shooting f2.8. You got really happy with that type of sharpness. I tried to move around to get rid of this branch, but it's still there. The light was really harsh. This is another image that's sharp and that I might edit later, but for now, we'll just leave it. Um, this is one of those images that tells a story again. You can't see it, but Mama Panda is actually right here, and this is a really young panda. And this panda's watching Mama go crazy on this tree that she was chopping up. And just the look on this panda's face tells such a great story. It, it, you, it makes you curious as to what's over here. It makes you really wonder. And if you show it, it kind of tells a bit of a story. But I like adding wonder to images. I like making people think about what could be over there, what's happening over there. And I love this image. It's really cute. And again, I added just some contrast to this one because I got softer light and then some clarity and some vibrance to bring out the colors. You can see it's sharp. Could be sharper. The sharpness is probably back here a little bit, but it's it's fine. Uh, this is the mama over here at the other side of the image, which I haven't edited at all. Again, it's sharp. I thought, you know, there might be a time at some point in my life I need that image, so I left it. But... Um, probably will never edit that image this is probably my favorite image taken with a 70 to 200 it's that same panda as you can see the trees all ripped up by mama but just the look on that panda's face is so perfect it's so perfect the only issue that I really have with this image is this post in the background you can kinda of tell there's a fence and I like even in the zoo I like the photos to look like they're wild uh, even in sanctuaries I should say and so I might go and clone stamp that out in Photoshop Elements later, but it doesn't bother me too much. I think it's really only noticeable if you are the shooter of the image. Um, but yeah, really cute image. That that image is is a lot of fun. The edit is simple. Like I said, I don't I don't bother to do too much on wildlife photography editing. If you do too much, it starts to make everything look fake with wildlife, especially and sharpness this is as sharp as a photo will get it's just if you are checking sharpness the best thing to do in Lightroom is you just hit the plus um, at the eye is probably where you want the focus or wherever you wanted the focus and you should be able to see every strand of hair 
on the animal or person's hair uh, to make it to to know it's perfectly sharp. And yeah, that's sharp as it gets. It's a little bit soft here, I think, because the panda's mouth was opening. Uh, but it's not a big deal. The sharpness is on the eyes. I wanted to really bring out the light on the eye, so I actually did a little bit of editing to the eye, which you can't tell here, but I took the adjustments brush and I put the sharpness and clarity up a bit and I painted the eye a little bit and that's why it's got that really bright glow in the eye. It makes the image the, just a little adjustment there. This is a, another image. I edited this one to death, but I had some funky light so it didn't come out great and it's not perfectly sharp so this is one of those images that I probably wouldn't keep if it wasn't for social media but I could post this to Instagram and people would go crazy about it so it's one of those images I'm not going to keep on file I'll never add it to my portfolio because it's not sharp enough but for something like Instagram it might work it might get like a thousand likes <laughs> people love their panda bears um, yeah this is the mama and the baby I had this strand of grass that I could clone stamp out, but I didn't edit this image because it's not great. The, the panda's looking up to mama and it's kind of cute, but it doesn't blow me away. I'll keep it on file because it's sharp and probably never use it, but it's good to keep this stuff on file just in case. I was hiding out for this type of image. I wanted the, the baby panda to reach over mama's arm and kind of just give me a look. The only problem I have with this image is the panda's eyes are closed. And I would have liked them to be open for that shot. And the edit's the same all the way through. I don't over edit this stuff. You see the white balance is a little bit blue here. And that happens sometimes in harsh light. And the best way to adjust it is find something white in the image like the panda bear's face. And just make a minor adjustment and you should get rid of that. You can also do things I, in this image. I, I uh, fix some of that by by changing the hue. So the aqua hue, it, if it's at normal, you can see all these blue bits to the grass. You just drink, drop that down and it's all gone and you've got your clean image. This is another one of those really sharp, cute images where the panda was looking at me. That's the same panda, top four favorite images. This is the type of image that sells work really well for stock photography because it is sharp as nails. And there's a lot of room here for text. It's at the two-thirds mark of the image. And technically, it's perfect. I think it's shot at 100 ISO, so that's why there's absolutely no noise. And yeah, that image is perfect for stock photography. That will sell really well, I believe. And as you can see, very little edit, just a little bit of contrast, some clarity, and some vibrance, and the image is done. I might come back and remove some of the blues from the, the grass, but that's beautiful I love that image that's the cutest panda in the world I'm 100% positive about that uh, same panda same sharpness not as cool of an image not as nice of a, a look uh, to it so this is another one of those ones I'll keep on file for future use sometimes you get a client and they want an image exclusively for a certain period of time and what you can do is you can sell them image one and then use image two for your own uses or for another client and it's two different images so it works out that way um, over to the giant panda adults this one was basically I kinda missed this shot I was trying to get its whole head including ears and create this pattern using um, it its pattern of of, uh, of fur but I had I missed the ears and so instead what I did is I cropped it all the way down you can see this was the crop before and since I missed I wanted to shoot like up here since I missed the moving animal I just decided to crop way in and it, it was really effective it was really nice uh, once I did that I would have liked to get the ears in too but I'm happy with that in the end uh, this is basically what I was trying to do with that image before so I can't complain too much the thing about this image is the light was really harsh, which is why I changed it to black and white. Uh, it was just really, really harsh afternoon light, and it came it came with like a glow right here. And I fixed it by going to black and white. And I like how it came out. I did more editing to this image than I normally would. With black and white, you kind of have to. Uh, lots of contrast. Drop the highlights to bring the details. Drop the blacks to really make the black stand out. And then 
Um, some mi other minor adjustments like some sharpness issues as well. But I'm happy with how that came out as well. I'm not a big black and white shooter, so if I can get a black and white image I like, I'm happy. Um, again, this is one of those images that's completely sharp, but I'm not sure it has a lot of value, so I'll keep it on file just in case there's a client that's looking for something like that in the future. Uh, the panda giving me a funny look, and the sharpness is great. The exposure is right on. You've got way too harsh of afternoon light here, which is blowing out some of the details, but it's not terrible, and something I'll keep on file. This is a panda sticking its tongue out at me. I'm not sure there's any use for this image for me, but another one of those social media images that people love. So it will go on file, and you'll probably see it on my Facebook or Instagram feed <laughs> at some point. Uh, this one's probably a little bit better an image just because it's over here and when you're shooting like advertising or stock photography you need some like room for the text. There's a little bit of room for text over here so it's a little bit better. The eyes are a little bit closed and I think I'm going to actually even though I've edited it already I'm going to do that same trick here with adding some clarity and sharpness to the eyes. Uh, you've got to really be careful when you do that. Because every time you you mess with the sharpness and clarity of an image, you're going to introduce a little bit of noise. So you got to be careful so you don't introduce too many noise or artifacts to your images. But see, it just brings out the eye a bit there and is a little bit better. Another black and white shot that I'm really really happy with. I loved how this came out. And again, I was dealing with the harsh light, which is why I did this. This is how harsh it came out without me dropping the highlights way down. But in black and white, you can kind of mess with this stuff a little bit more. And yeah, I kind of did this grayish tone to it, and I love it. I really like that image. Um, this is another one of those ones I'll keep on stock, but probably never use. And that's it. That's all my panda images. So there's 59 keepers from the day. There's probably five images that I'll turn into stocks. And maybe one or two images that I'll put into my profile portfolio. So you can't complain. That's a really good day of photography. Anyways, like I mentioned, head over to brendansadventures.com and by the time this video is on YouTube, the full photos completely edited will be right here on the site. And that's it for the show. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. There's tons of cool stuff coming up from China. Uh, I'm way up in the north, basically on the edge of Inner Mongolia, and there are lots of cool things up here like colorful mountains and temples built into hillsides. So stay tuned for this. We've got China. We've got more Mongolia coming up as well. And, yeah, that's it for the show today. Uh, I'll see you next time on, on uh, Brendan's Adventures and Brendan Benson Travel Photography. See you next time. Peace.